ओम ज्ञान ज्ञानंजन शलाकाय चक्षुन मीलित येन तस्म श्री गुरव नम हरे कृष्णा गोविंद प्रभु गरु very happy to have come here see all the happy devotees hari bol hari bol krishna consciousness is spreading all over the world by the mercy of shri lakshmi we have uh, devotees here from various parts of india and also from america nitya gora da you already saw vasudev datta prabhu hari bol from Slovenia which is a country you probably never heard of the total population is about what 25 lakhs 20 lakhs small town in india well that what's your name arthur yeah okay i got you in saffron arthur please get up arthur arthur that means that comes in bhagavad gita that word arthur Arta Arta means distress. All the Artas come to pious Artas come to Krishna. Arta Arta the Bhagavad Gita is very powerful. It is very powerful. We have the Kalanidhi Prabhu from from Belarus, Russia. Actually, from Kalanidhi. Then Madhu Krishna Das also from. Poland, Ivanko Das from Croatia. All heard of Croatia. It's next to Slovenia. The distinction. From Sri Lanka, Sri Damodar. Who's that? Rasik Raj. I can't see. It's so light. Ready on. Ready on. Ready on. Can't see. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted that Krishna consciousness would be spread all over the world, and it has spread all over the world. Shila Prabhupada personally travelled to many countries of the world for preaching Krishna consciousness. But the country he was most interested in spreading Krishna consciousness in was India, as I heard it said in a speech on about Shila Prabhupada. November the 15th 1977 the day after Srila Prabhupada's departure from this world that Srila Prabhupada had said that my guru maharaj ordered me to preach all over the world now i have done that and my own desire is to preach in india Arriba! Arriba! and actually Srila Prabhupada uh, after establishing krishna consciousness in the west spent most of his time in india he uh had three major projects mayapur vrindavan bombay and uh he also wanted to organize what he called the kisan movement that's a hindi word the farmers and he he personally had a plan to he to he had a plan to personally travel from village to village in india preaching krishna consciousness should have brought him and uh he had much hope for spreading krishna consciousness in the villages of india even before shila propa traveled to the west he was uh, interested uh, or very much interested in spreading krishna consciousness in rural india uh quoting the name of uh, mahatma gandhi who was also very much concerned with uh, the real india the village india and shila prabhupad he gave the uh, spiritual focus to mahatma gandhi's uh, rural based in idea, ideas for rural based india of course uh, india went in a different direction gandhi died shortly after india's 
political independence, and anyway, his influence was more or less dead, and even before he died. And uh, instead, India followed the plans of Nehru of industrialization. And today, Indians are very proud of the highly industrialized mess of a country that they have. They're very proud of their westernization. The sign of a gentleman in modern India is that he can speak the terrible English, which is normally spoken in India. And uh, traditional Indian dress is more or less uh, forgotten or being forgotten very quickly. Today is Varaha Dwadashi, but there's probably very few people, especially young people in India today, who've even heard of Varaha Day, thanks to the demoniac policies of the government, in which they uh, have deliberately killed spiritual culture. In Sri Lanka, at least in the, uh, in the Hindu schools, all the children... You ask them the names of the Das Avatar, any one of them can say it quickly. They didn't have such stupid ideas of so-called secularism as they have in India. They recognize uh, that religious education is required. So it's uh, a great credit to the people of India that they have maintained so much spiritual culture despite their own government, their own people doing their best to destroy the spiritual culture. In uh, just over 60 years of political independence, the Indian leaders have done more to destroy Indian culture than the foreign invaders did in over 1,000 years. But especially in the villages, because the people have uh, less education, which means they're less stupid, uh, the spiritual culture is more alive. Yeah, everyone please turn off their cell phone. <laughs> yeah, modern education, the more you get, the more stupid you become. If as a result of your so-called education, you become uh, atheistic, materialistic, proud, what is the use? If you go through 15, 20, 25 years of schooling and you don't know who Varaha Dev is, then your whole education is totally useless. Everything is tested at the time of death. At the time of death, the ability to write software programs will not help one whatsoever. At the time of death, one has to remember Krishna. So that education should be imparted by which people can remember Krishna. Yeah, so uh, in the villages, there's people that still the spirit is more alive, of the uh, spiritual spirit. Uh, therefore, I, I particularly wanted to bring uh, devotees from Salem and Velour here to see the, how the preaching is being cultivated in the rural areas as I'm involved in this uh, development of the centers in Salem and Velo. And in the rural areas around these cities, uh, devotees have been preaching in the villages. So just to uh, give some idea of the scope for preaching Krishna consciousness, I particularly ask devotees involved in that village preaching to come here. In this area... Uh, Thanks to the uh, guidance and inspiration of Ananda Govinda Prabhu, there are 110 initiated devotees. So I congratulate Ananda Govinda Prabhu on this, and all of you for taking this up. And let's see if we can do something in other areas also. We shouldn't think that ISKCON is meant only for the cities. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Jato Nagaradi Gram, in all, all the towns and the villages. So every person is precious to Krishna. It's not that Krishna likes the doctors and the engineers better than the farmers and the housewives. And it's also not that uh, the uh, doctors and engineers can necessarily even understand. Krishna consciousness better than others. 
அல்லது மருத்துவர்களும் என்ஜினியர்களும் கிருஷ்ண பக்தி வந்து அதிகமா புரிஞ்சுக்கலாம் அப்படின்றது ஒண்ணு கிடையாது Krishna bhakti is an attribute of the soul it has nothing to do with uh, mundane education or money or any such thing dhane jane pandite krishna re nahi pai keval bhakti bas chaitanya gosai one cannot attain krishna by money uh, reputation or education or any other material attribute Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, comes under the control of the devotees to have pure devotion to him. So today is, as I was saying, is Varaha Dvadashi and tomorrow is Nityananda Trayodashi. Now generally in the Gorya Sampradaya we speak more of Nityananda Prabhu. But there is no mundane difference between Ram, Nishingha, Varaha, Kurma and the original form of Godhead, Shri Krishna. There is transcendental difference but there is no mundane difference. This is important to understand. That uh, Shri Krishna expands himself or, or we say expands but that's the, the language used but he is eternally existing in many forms even though he is the one personality of Godhead. Advaita machute manade manantu rupa madhyam purana purusham nabayoga namcha vedeshu duralabham aduralabham atna bhakto govinda madhi purusham tamaham bhajami He is uh, infallible. He is beginningless. Even though he is one, He has many forms. Even though he is the oldest person, he always appears as a fresh youth. This sounds contradictory. But it is possible to understand. Not simply by uh, study, even of the Vedas. But if one is uh, full with love of Krishna, then Krishna reveals himself to that. Yeah. That Govinda, the original enjoyer, original controller we worship. Govinda is very beautiful. His beauty is uh, described also in Brahma Samhita and in many scriptures. His blackish transcendental threefold bending form holding a flute. Govinda also appears as Varaha Dev. Varaha Dev is Maybe um, among all the uh, mysterious forms of the Lord, the most difficult to understand. Uh, it's easy, uh, well, of course, for some people that they cannot appreciate any form of the Lord. But for those who can appreciate the, that the Supreme Lord is a person, then it's uh, very natural for them to... except that he is a beautiful young boy. Of course, some people think that he's an old man with a beard. But that is an uh, uninformed, materialistic conception. God is the most beautiful. Govinda, Shamasun, is the most beautiful. But how is it that the Govinda, Shamasun, the most beautiful, appears as Varaha? Vivra, not Vivra, Varaha, the... Uh, in the form of a pig. Who would want to worship a pig? Varaha Dei Bhagavan is no ordinary pig. Even though in the form of the most despicable animal, or even though the, the form of the pig is the most despicable animal, uh, Varaha Dei is the same uh, Satyarananda Hari Bhagavan. His beauty and his attractiveness are not lacking in the form of Varaha. Varaha Dev appeared from the nostril of Lord Brahma. Small form. And very soon expanded himself to become so big that he could pick up the whole earth 
At this time, the demigods understood that he is Bhagavan Narayana in the form of uh, appearing in this Varaha Rupa. They were very happy to see him. They praised him with the Vedic name. Now, ordinarily, uh, if we see a hog, just like if a pig was to run in here, we wouldn't be very pleased. It's not the kind of thing that people want to do, or they don't want to see, even see a pig. But the demigods were very happy to see, to uh, have the darshan of this form of Varahadi. The demigods are all uh, exalted persons. So they accepted that this form is the supreme personality of God. We should not try to uh, judge the form of the Lord by our own uh, frog-like intelligence. The well-known example of the frog in the well. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is beyond our tiny uh, tiny powers of understanding, of conceptualization. The demigods accepted Varaha Dev as Bhagavan. Vyasadeva accepted. All the great Acharyas have accepted. Uh, to the present day, there's the, uh, the, the temple is there at Simhachalam. Lakshmi Varaha Narasimha Swami. That's the most famous temple I know of. So up to the present day, people are worshipping uh, Varaha Dev. Varaha Dev is uh, usually worshipped uh, with... Uh, Lakshmi is the form of Bhu, Bhuvaraha. Bhumi Devi. Bhumi Devi. She is the wife of Lord Vishnu, specifically of Lord Varaha Devi. <coughs> so all the uh, great demigods, they accept the form of Varaha Devi, and we should also. The... Uh, Demons, they are not pleased at the appearance of the Lord. Hiranyaksha was not pleased at the appearance of Varahade. Hiranyaksha sought to fight and kill the Supreme Personality of Godhead as Varahade. That attempt was, of course, uh, futile. And Varahade very easily killed the otherwise... Uh, unconquerable Hiranyaksha. So this is all described in the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, yeah, Vyasadev has uh, recorded that therein. So we should take advantage of these, of the Srimad Bhagavatam presented to us by Srila Prabhupada so that we can get complete knowledge of the appearance, appearances of the Supreme Lord. Please try to uh, study the books of Srila Prabhupada very carefully and very seriously. That will help all of us to have a clear understanding of Krishna consciousness. Of who Krishna is. Krishna is Nityananda. Tomorrow we shall celebrate Nityananda Trayodashi if Lord Krishna desires that uh, that we shall still be in this world in this body tomorrow and you're laughing huh? but one day will come when uh, either one day will come when you won't see the sunset or one night will come when you won't see the sunrise Ayo Harati Vai Pung Sam Ujjanastam Chayanaso. Hmm, what's the next? Tasyate Yakshano Nita Uttama Shloka Bharate. By every rising and setting of the sun, the, with every rising and setting, the sun diminishes the life of everyone except those who utilize their time in topics of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So we take it for granted that we shall be alive in the present bodies tomorrow. This is foolishness. Bhagavan is Nityananda. He is eternal and blissful. 
our position in this material world is anityam asukam lokam. This is the world of non-eternality and non-happiness. But we are such fools that we think we are happy here and that we shall remain here forever. So Bhagavan Nityananda comes to this world to show us what is the actual meaning of life. Spiritual life begins with Janam Ritu Jaravyadhi Dukado Shanu Darshanam with a transcendental vision of the miseries of birth, death, old age and disease. Everyone sees all the time birth, death, old age and disease. But it is a case of pashan apina pashati, seeing and not seeing. They see, but <coughs> so foolish that they don't realize the import of that. Just like the goats, they're one by one being slaughtered, and those who are not yet slaughtered, they're chewing grass. So Bhagavan Nityananda comes to show us what is actual Nityananda. And we shall live in Nityananda, in eternal bliss, by uh, being Krishna conscious. By remembering the Supreme Lord in his various forms. We shouldn't think that Varaha Dev is something inferior. I'm a devotee of Krishna, I don't care for all these other forms. That is not a proper perspective. So especially on Varaha Dvadashi, we remember Varaha Day. And tomorrow, if Krishna so wishes, we shall uh, celebrate Sri Nityananda Trayodashi. So actually the festival uh, is in the morning. Often the uh, devotees who are organizing, they hold it in the evening for the convenience of the uh, those who wish to attend, those who wish to attend to other duties in the day and, and come in the evening. But actually the festival is celebrated for the pleasure of Lord Nityananda and not for the convenience of uh, anyone else. So please... Uh, even if it's a little inconvenient for you, try to come tomorrow morning for the festival glorifying Lord Nikan and the Prabhu. Thank you very much. Rambanandri Hare Krishna. I also know two words of Tamil. <laughs>